need the mic. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good morning and welcome to everybody out there who's listening in today. My name is Dr. Susan and we are live on WGPA sunny 1100 AM. Remember, this is a live call-in health and wellness show. And if you want to call in today, the number is 610-866-8074. And we are talking today about the work from home, home for the holidays, dilemma that everybody is uh, working through and trying to navigate this insane path of working from home and staying at home and then also homeschooling your kids if that's also happening in your area or wherever you're living right now. So we have done some research, or at least I have, I've talked to quite a few people um, across the country and also some friends of mine who have some amazing YouTube channels and podcasts and vlogs out there about their experiences about working from home and you know how that works for you so the question we have for you is how many of you have the pleasure of working from home right now how you may define pleasure might be up to you but you know many are facing challenges since March 13th and working to make that work at home transition successful for some um, some are posting their joy and accomplishments on YouTube and Pinterest and yet others are clicking their heels over and over again but the whole I want to go home for some is not that red sequin dream that you know we may have watched in the movies so you know in this crazy world where this novel virus has turned everything upside down crazy and spinning and as people questioning the logic of the universe sometimes you know that work from home dilemma really does for some present quite a problem and with no end in sight, you know, strategies and plans are absolutely necessary for our physical survival, our mental survival, and just for some, as I talk to the survival of our children, if you have them with home with you. So the unique thing about uh, my personal life is that I have worked from home for almost four years now. I moved my health practice home uh, a while ago, I used to work in offices in Philly and Easton and even New York a couple of times. And I turned the bottom level of my home into some treatment rooms, uh, much to the dismay of my children, because that means less playroom and bedrooms for them. But when um, the big cue hit for me, I was already working from home. So that transition for me wasn't as bad as it was, but the unique thing is, is you know, the kids are now homeschooling. So it, that becomes a transition for two. But I have a lot of friends and colleagues who've always worked from home, but now since the majority of everyone is home, well, sometimes that home sweet home is not so sweet and the challenges that everybody's facing is unique. So, you know, we have different personalities, our lifestyles are different, and even the type of work we do. I have one girlfriend, she just messaged me real quick. She goes, hey, if you can figure out how to work from home, if we've always worked from home and now how to manage homeschooling, let me know. That was her message this morning. As I'm, I have like 13 text messages. So I do have people texting me their questions. Right now I have six questions to look at on my phone over the next break. So, but again, if you want to call in today at 610-866-8074. But here's the thing. So everybody who works from home, we got to figure out a couple of things. And I read, did some research from Scientific American, The Scientist, uh, American Psychological Journal posted an article. There's even a bunch on um, the internet right now. But one of the things that they said is we have to figure out when to work from home, where to work out of our home, and how to create boundaries between that work and that personal life, and sometimes even physical boundaries between that workspace and home space. And for those of you who have larger homes and the extra bedroom, that's great. But for some people having small efficiency apartments or you know a really tiny home and you don't have that choice, um, you really have to be creative about where you create that workspace. Um, one of the doctors that I talked to uh, is a, um, a psychologist said, whatever you do, uh, make sure that you know you don't work from bed because you know working remote and having that as your backdrop on your Zoom calls is just really unprofessional. So you have to watch that. But one of the things um, that I talked to, I talked to a couple of uh, spine doctors uh, and chiropractors and health and wellness and pain management specialists. 
So we'll talk about some of the technology and things that are out there, but we also talked about some of the things that the um, those practitioners are facing right now. So we talk about office equipment, career development, training opportunities, even you know how do you build relationships with your colleagues anymore. So working from home sweet home, both for your business and your career, also means we, we have to make healthy choices at this point. So when we were um, looking at some things, you know, content and tips to put in here today, I did reach out to a lot of my friends on social media and we have quite a few who submitted a lot of information for me to share. And if you have any questions as we are going along today or just want to share your tips or even a problem you can't solve, hey, please call in and share today, 610-866-8074. Um, all of my clients and patients are, are they know that they pretexted some of their stuff they wanted me to mention on the air today. So that's one of the neat things. But one of the um, our featured contributors for today's show, she couldn't be here today because she is in the middle of a live Zoom call for her job and she couldn't get out of that. So, but she sent me a bunch of things to share for real moms um, and dads who work from home. And what she's created on YouTube is this vlog they call it where she shares her personal experiences of not only working from home but also keeping your home up to snuff and then also raising her two boys so if you want to check her out i'm, I'm talking about Brittany nicole she has a youtube channel it's youtube.com com, wait youtube slash com i can't even do this right um and her tag name is Brittany nicole 1025 so it's b-r-i-t-t-a-n-y nicole n-i-c-o-l-e 1025 so search her on youtube social media but her channel features a real life mom working of two working from homeschooling keeping the house cooking the meals prepping and i was watching a lot of her vlogs and it's real it's like real honest to god like this is what happens in my home during the life and it's it's really it's it's really nice to watch and refreshing because yesterday one of the vlogs was funny because you know she had a battery but the battery died because the boys were playing with the camera and then she had to switch batteries in the middle of her vlog so it's real life but she shows how she works to make things work in the situation that she's currently in um so that was one of the neat things but I asked her after watching a lot of her content, I said, just text me your number one thing. Like if you could say, okay, what is the number one tip we should share to all the moms working at home or dads? She goes, the best thing you have to do is every Sunday, you got to create a to-do list. You have to prepare for the week. If you're not going to prepare for the week, you are ha it, it's going to be a problem. So every Sunday, she does a to-do list and she writes down and she prioritizes what she has to do to get her through her week. So if you think about it, planning is important. They, I, everybody who's done this, every successful business entrepreneur, every leadership seminar I've ever been to, they always say you either plan for success or you plan to fail. That's it. There's no, two, there's, there's no gray in the middle of that. It's either planning for success or plan to fail. So. Those of you who are listening today, which one are you? Do you plan for success? Do you Are you prepared for your week? Do you know what you're gonna do? Do you have your to-do list? Do you check things off? So how many of you actually write down your to-do list each week? Other than your honey to-do list, that's different. <laughs> you know. But do you check things off as you go to see that sense of accomplishment? And are you even able to do an organized weekly to-do list? So that's one of the most important things that she has found that she's been sharing out there um, to help others know that, yeah, life is real and, you know, sometimes crazy stuff happens, but, you know, this is how we live through our life. So again, check out Brittany Nicole 1025 Check out her YouTube channel. She's got quite a few subscribers out there. I know she's also on Instagram, so, you know, she's out there. So and if you need that information, you can message me or I can get you that information too. Um, but again, my name is Dr. Susan. We are live on WGPA Sunny 1100 AM this morning and we are talking about the work at home dilemma and how you can work your way through surviving the work at home dilemma if you've never worked at home before and how you can kind of solve some of the problems that you're going through right now. 
If you've got a strategy, a tip, or a question, you can call in at 610-866-8074. So again, but hey, check out Brittany Nicole um, and check out your to-do list and see how that can kind of work for you. So we, um, we were talking about a couple of other things, but I've gotten a ton of comments on Zoom and some people are doing quite a few humor things on Zoom, like you're Zooming through 2020 and they cannot wait for it to be over. Um, you know, you never thought, I had one a high school kid <laughs> message me, he goes, you know, he goes, I never thought my, you know, high school year would go so fast. He goes, I've just Zoomed right through it. And I thought that was funny because it was doing a play on words. But one of the things I talked to, I talked to Karen Day, who is a resident spinal expert. She specializes in spinal injuries, healing. Um, she's worked with chiropractors. She also now does chiropractic as well. And she she talked about setting up your workplace and I thought this was interesting because I also talked to a couple of other doctors who work on physi physiotherapy muscle recovery and what they're seeing in the office right now since the work at home issue has started since March 13th they are having a new class of injuries that seems to be plaguing America and fall in the category of this get this tech injuries that's right tech injuries now I didn't really realize it was such an issue but after talking to a lot of practitioners and um, a couple of spinal experts and back doctors and things like that I found it interesting that they are finding more and more patients coming in with chronic chronic back injuries shoulder issues shoulder neuropathy their hands are people's hands are going numb so they're kind of throwing them into this large category called tech injuries and what we what we found out after talking to everybody is these injuries come about due to chronic posture compromises think about that chronic posture compromises made every single minute of the day when people are tethered to their electronics tethered to their computer tethered to their laptop tethered to their phone or this phone or that phone and when you have these multiple tech devices What's happening is people are setting up their home offices and here's where the problem comes in. So this is what I see. Poor posture, neck issues, hearing issues, and what, now this is the new one, compromised nerve impingement. And by the way, that's very painful. If you've never had nerve impingement, you don't want to have it. It's very painful. Hip imbalance, carpal tunnel, which we've known about for years because you're sitting at a computer typing all that time. And of course, the biggest, which they're seeing issues health issues arising from what they call the forward slump now if you know the forward slump it's that leaning over you're hunched over your phone your head's always bent down your chin's in your chest as one doctor said just go around and look at every teenager and you can see the forward slump because that's how they all are they're all bent over their phone with their chin in their chest and somebody jokingly said it's kind of like we're being run over with extras from the hunchback of Notre Dame so it's one of those those things but the the seriousness behind this work at home dilemma is this tech injury category now that people are suffering from so when I talked to dr. day and a couple other doctors it said it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time to correct spinal spinal issues anything so the best solution she said hey let's work on preventing these issues from even happening by understanding how to use technology correctly and how to place technology correctly to match your ergonomic needs. Now ergonomics is a big word. Basically what that means is, hey, if you're at a computer and you're sitting, you need to make sure that your spine, your shoulders, and your wrists, and your eyes are all in alignment so that when you're looking at your computer, working on your keyboard, or staring at your phone, that you're not bent over, you're not out of balance, that everything is where it needs to be so that you're in perfect alignment with your electronic device so that you don't have a spinal issue and that you're not imbalanced or that you're leaning over a certain way. I talked to a back surgery specialist um, from Philly and they're seeing so many chronic back issues that are compromised by poor pressure because being in front of a computer is nonstop. He's like, one of the things he really wants to do is he wants to start teaching parents on how to teach their children how to sit at a computer because now our children are in front of a computer 24 7 
They're in school eight hours a day, staring at a computer screen. They're not getting up in a classroom. They're not moving around. They're at home. Some kids are doing their schoolwork sitting on a couch, which he said is the worst thing you can do for a growing child. Um, and he goes, it's not a healthy outlook even for our children because now we are just staring at this computer screen and they're not sitting in desks, they're not straight aligned, and they're not moving in between. I had one parent who messaged me and she said her biggest problem is the school that her kids are going to is they have 42 minute classes, they only have two minutes in between each Zoom session and they only have 25 minutes for lunch even though they're home full time. And she goes, Two minutes is not enough in between a class. When they were in the high school, they were walking. They had five minutes in between classes. They were walking up two or three flights of stairs. They were moving around. They were getting books out of their locker. She goes, now you have two minutes in between a Zoom session. And she goes, sometimes it's not even enough time to get to the restroom and back. And then they only give them 25 minutes for lunch. And she goes, how do you stop that craze of expecting now that we're all on that you stare at a computer for eight hours versus when you were in school you were up you were about you were moving you were socializing so even the doctors are starting to see that is becoming even a posture back issue for little kids now which is an issue yeah. so when when i went back to a couple of doctors we talked about the forward slump and how these kids are sitting working at their computers and i know i'm talking about problems but believe it or not there's a solution coming at the end of this little thing here so when we talk about the forward slump and how our kids are sitting on the couch working on their computers, it is really devastating and here is why. Um, I talked to a, you know, all the doctors I talked to, what they said was the most, um, thing, the most important thing you need to pay attention to is that when you're in that forward slump and your chin is in your chest, you are diminishing oxygen flow because your diaphragm is compromised. You're actually mushing your diaphragm and you're making it very difficult for your body to breathe in and get as much oxygen as it possibly needs. And they said that when oxygen is compromised, this is a quote, it causes headaches, fatigue, memory loss, weaker muscles, and can also affect overall circulation that can therefore weaken your immune system. Now that's a mouthful. So in other words, every time you do that forward slump and your chin is in your chest and you're bent over your device and you're staring, you're actually creating a long-term physical problem. So three of them came up with solutions. So what I did was I took all of their solutions and I put them in this cute little solution packet for you. So if you're taking notes, here you go. Um, so always focus on correct posture. If you're a parent, if your kids are slumped over their phone and their chin is in their chest, take their phone out of their hands and glue it to a wall. That was one, one doctor's solution. I don't know if it'll work, but get their phones out of their hands. They say that whatever you do, get a cell phone stand. Get something and have the phone away from you so that you're forcing your body to look up. Get a standing desk. They recommend that all devices be kept at eye level. And I mean that's when you're looking straight ahead, not when you're looking down at the floor. And if your kid's are parked in front of a computer every day, get them a standing desk too. That seems to be the biggest movement in technology right now is having a standing desk where you're actually standing up to work. And work to incorporate movement into what is now a very sedentary school situation, which is very unhealthy. So I know in my practice, too, I've been treating many, many for lower back issues right now and neuropathy in the arms. So we use cryo T-shock, Thor laser low-level light therapy, um, and both of those therapies work to help relieve some of the situations. But I know even for me, when I started doing more virtual consultations with patients all over the country, the best thing I did, I had my son who works at MS Texi and Bath, great local business. If you need a computer, please reach out to MS Texi and Bath. And he installed on my wall a very large monitor and we tethered it to my laptop. So now when I'm looking at my laptop, I can actually look up at the wall and I'm seeing what's on my laptop on this much larger screen. And that helped change my posture. I also got a standing desk. So you can just pop it up and stand when you're working. But again, raising that computer level to uh, that monitor to eye level made a big difference in me. So now what we're asking for parents and kids and people to do at home is change your workstation. Change your workstation. Make sure that your monitors are at eye level. Raise your chair on, you know, raise your desk at your, you know, your chair. Raise your chair a little bit, a couple of inches. Put your keyboard up on one of those keyboard stands. But moving things up, most, if you did a study of most workstations, 
you'll find that most computers and keyboards are too low for the person working on them. And that's one of the first things that causes all of those back issues and having the forward slump issue that you want to avoid as much as possible. So if that's the solution, the other thing is too, is don't let your kids do school from the couch. Make sure they're sitting at a desk, sitting at a table, making sure that the chair is the right height for them. Some of your kids might have to sit on a chair cushion or something to kind of raise them up a little bit. But that alignment is key to prevent the back issues that all of these doctors are now seeing and now labeling as tech injuries. So it's very, it's something to be concerned about. You know, we don't know how much longer our kids are going to be schooled from home or whatever. So we really have to be cognizant of those injuries and what we can do to prevent them. So just to kind of keep that up, but be aware of what's out there, you know, on, you know, the tech side. There are a lot of options for changing just your physical workspace. There are risers. I had, I had one gentleman, he actually, which is not good for the aeration of your laptop, he was just putting his laptop on a shoebox. But you really do need one of those chillers underneath your laptop so you don't burn it up. But again, um, hanging your monitor on a wall works really well. Getting a separate monitor and hooking your laptop up to a monitor so it's up and away from you works really well. And if you don't have those tech skills again, hey, give MS Techsy a call in Bath. Uh, their number is 610-837-7400. You can ask for TJ. They can set up and they have set up tons and tons of home office spaces um, since March 13th. So use the people that are out there that have done this professionally so that they can help you work more efficiently from home. So, so so talking to everybody around, we're talking about working from home. If you got a question or if you have found your absolute perfect solution, please call in, text me to share so I can get that up on the air for everybody. We want to make sure that everybody has a wonderful, wonderful um, experience working from home because we want everybody to be happy and healthy at the same time. So that's one of the things. So I put a couple of shout outs out on social media to say, okay, guys, if you can't call in today, what is a tip that you have that has made you happier or successful working from home so that you're not having issues? So one of the things was my friend Matthew Miles uh, put it on social media. He said, whatever you do, get outside and set a time everybody, every day, every day. I go to our local park and walk, set boundaries as best you can physically with your workspace from the rest of your home and get dressed and showered every day day he goes those are his that's his that's his suggestion on how to be successful at home and it's funny because thank you matthew miles for that that um you know that response and it's funny because a lot of the doctors i talked to said the same thing about getting dressed dressed and showered every day get up just like you're going to work many suggest that oh it's fun to work in your pajamas but many many health professionals are now saying that that is actually counterproductive to the workspace because when you're dressed for success, you live in that role. When you're dressed for sleeping, they fi actually find that you're not as sharp and as coherent as you would if you were working in your work clothes. So what do you think about that? I don't know. Do you find that you're more productive when you work in work clothes versus working in your pajamas? <laughs> I'm not sure. So, but again, think about how that works for you. So, but going back to what Matt do, get outside and set a time every day to get some fresh air. That's important. We know that sunshine and fresh air are imperative to a healthy life. We know, we know that. The sun heals everything. The sunshine activates our vitamin D, which makes us healthier. So if you're not out in the sun getting that vitamin D, your body's just storing it. It's not doing much. If you take all of that away, your body will never be able to detox from all the malfunct malfunctioning in cells that, you know, hey, as we age, our cells die every day, so we have to work on it. So how will your body get fresh oxygen and benefit from the cleansing power of the sun and the fresh air if you aren't going outside? Today, we are in the Lehigh Valley. It is beautiful out there today. It is gorgeous. Everybody should be outside getting some sunshine today. It is a beautiful day. Uh, and that's Matthew's suggestion, is literally get outside for that refreshing. The sun does a lot of powerful things to the human body. We know that it creates biological change every time we're in the sun. And we know that it also is one of the most powerful healing mechanisms on the planet. So we don't want to do that. But it's a very important. Now, he also said move every day. So I talked to some movement specialists in our area. 
And I even remember some coursework that I went to about uh, muscle recovery, because I'm certified in muscle recovery. And one of the most important things I learned, I went to a Thor laser training, because I do laser pain management and pain healing with no side effects in my practice. It's called low level light therapy. And one of the most important things I learned about physical movement is when you move, you cause your muscle tissues to produce a protein called myokines. Now, they're very important, and the more you move, the healthier you are, because myokines, when you make them in your body, they are important disease preventators, and they're also, they also have anti-inflammatory functions. So the more you move, the more myokines you're gonna produce, and the healthier you're going to be. So get out there and move. That's why they say whatever you do if you're working from home, don't sit, sit at the same position all day long because that's the worst thing you can do. Um, another person um, on Facebook basically said, whatever you do, maintain regular hours when you work from home. Do not work 24 seven. You need to set a schedule and stick to it. Post your schedule. Most of the time when you have those clear guidelines and you have a schedule, set a timer so that you can maintain that work, life, home balance. Um, I know sometimes I'm really guilty. I work all hours sometimes and I'm in my office till midnight sometimes doing things because that's one of the things I am horrible at is setting that balance because I work 24 seven. But I found that most small business owners right now are doing that because we're doing everything we can to survive during um, the mess of, of what's happened right now. So that's one of the things that, you know, we probably should be better at, but we're doing the best we can to, you know, to survive. So maintain regular hours. How many of you maintain regular work hours when you're at home? Do you work at all? Do you not work at all? Uh, what do you do on that? So that's one of the neat things. Oh, I have a couple of texts coming in. We'll get to that in a second. But maintain regular hours. So that is one of the, the other things. Um, I have another gentleman who, who works for an insurance company, and he said, Whatever you do, create a morning routine. Deciding when you're gonna sit down at your desk and start work at you know, one thing, he goes, but create a return that guides you into your office space. What morning routine indicates that you're about to start work? Whether it's making your cup of coffee since you're not going through a drive-thru right now, taking the time to actually savor the flavor and look outside the you know, window and check what the weather is, but it might be returning home after a jog but he goes, whatever you do, create a routine in the morning that gives your brain the idea that you're going to start work. A routine can be more powerful than a clock because it patterns your brain to think in a very specific way so that it's cluing you in that, okay, you gotta get your brain in gear even though you're still at home and you're tripping over Legos or stepping on those little green army men, you've gotta get that routine ready so that you know you're gonna go log in, do your job and be productive so that you can earn a living. So he's, for him, he goes, it's very important creating a morning routine every morning for him. That's very, very, very important. And we all know that, uh, hey, starting a routine that can clue your brain in, we know that you know staying in the pattern is very important. Most athletes do that all the time. Think about all the, the athletes who have a, this, what do they call it, a, you know, what do they call it when you have this, um, they do the same thing all the time, you know, where they always wear the same pair of socks for every game because they don't want to lose, you know, that's that routine of whatever you have to get your brain in the game they call it so maybe you need to get your brain in the game when you go to work every day to be more successful so even getting your kids in a routine to you know get ready for going hey we're going to go to school here's what we're going to do here's how this is going to work today you know set that brain up for that pattern so that they're they know what to expect you know i have and this here's another one another tip for working women how to be successful is very important now is setting ground rules with the people in your space so wherever you live whether it's a an efficiency apartment I'll talk to you about my friend Kathy who has an efficiency apartment and she messaged me a whole bunch of ideas of what happens when you live um, in an efficiency apartment and have to work from home now um, she said, whatever you do, you got to set ground rules with the people in your space or is my friend who works for Disney and is now working from home with five cats. You need to set ground rules for your pets as well. So, I thought that was funny. So you have to make sure that people are not invading your space during a certain time, keeping sounds to a minimum, 
because there are so many rules around your house that you, know, you, have to, you have to change some rules to keep your job secure. So one of the things I, you know, even the ground rules for your pets, it's funny because I have a lot of friends who work from Disney and now working from home in Disney, whether it's the call-in center, whether it's the DVC guys that I'm friends with, um, or even some of the shop Disney uh, crew that I'm now friends with because I'm on the phone with them all the time. So my one girlfriend works for Disney. It's funny because when you call in to talk to them, I'm also a Disney travel agent too besides all the fun things that I do, but when I call in to the Disney travel agencies now, it's neat, the message that you get when you call in. So just listen to, this is the message when you call in to some of the agents who work um, for the travel agency. It says, thank you for calling. We will be with you shortly. We just wanted to remind you that in case you're here, cats meowing or dogs barking in the background, that all of our employees are now working from home. So please be patient with you as you hear those outside noises as they are now working from their home environment. And I thought that was a nice kind of like lead in like, hey, guess what? We're not working in a call center anymore. We're working from my kitchen and I've got five cats. So my one girlfriend does have five cats. And I call in, you know, when we call in, sometimes I get her when I book a vacation for someone. And she's like, hey, you know, I've tried to put my area in a way so that my cats don't jump on my keyboard when I'm working with things, because cats will do that. And she's done some things to kind of keep um, her cats away. Tin foil on the countertop ten has a tendency to work. Um, but it's one of those things when you set your ground rules with the people or pets in your workspace. So, but one of the things I wanted to share with you is my friend Kathy about how she has set space guidelines for her in her efficiency apartment. What she did, and I thought this was, was brilliant, was she only, she lives in an efficiency apartment. So she's gotten a little like table where she has her computer on and she has a little cell phone stand and thing. But what she's did is to indicate that that's her workspace is she got blue painters tape. You know, the stuff that, you, you know, when you're usually painting on a wall that you put it on the wall so you don't get paint. She got blue painters stand again. She's living in an apartment, so she can't make any permanent damage or changes. So she actually has blue painters tape, and she literally basically taped a square out on the floor in the corner where her workspace is. And it's kind of like this blue line. So she knows that when she crosses that blue line, that's her work, her little work square. And then when she leaves that work square, she doesn't work. And it's just, it's just a visual representation of how to set that boundary for her to know where that space is. Now, the other person who also does that, she went to, I'm trying to think of what one of the, I think like maybe Bed Bath & Beyond or one of the local stores, and she got those really cheap room dividers. So it's like a three panel um, wall that's on hinges and you can fold them up or you can separate them. And she literally put up these three panel hinge walls and kind of boxed out the area. So she knows, cause she can't build walls and create a new room. So she made a temporary wall around her workspace creating that divide so she it's separate because most people need that separate workspace so she's done that i know one person who hung i know i've even done this in my office just for zoom calls she hung curtain rods from the ceiling and you can get the hang down curtain rods and then you can hang curtains as room dividers so it's a neat way of just separating space with just a shower curtain i know in my home office because we now do so many Zoom calls and I do so many online trainings, I hung up a shower curtain rod from the ceiling. There's little hooks you can get on, you know, basically anywhere. You can even get them at Home Depot that you hang out. And I've hung up about five different shower curtains. And every time I do a Zoom call, I just throw a new shower curtain in there. I have one that's like a beach. I have one with a Disney backdrop. I have one with an Italian backdrop. But that way, every time I'm on a Zoom call, I can quickly just change the shower curtain and have a different backdrop so that people don't see what's behind you when you're on the Zoom call, particularly if you're in a room where, you know, it's messy or you want to cover the mess or, you know, you're doing Zoom from your bedroom and you really shouldn't do that. Be a little bit more professional. But it's another way for people to create more of a workspace workspace when you have limited space to work with. So, and like I said, it's, you know, I, I have one gentleman who works from home now all the time. And he goes, additionally, he goes, just because I'm working from home, that doesn't mean I can let the service people in. It doesn't mean I can take care of the pets. And it doesn't mean that everybody else in the family assumes I should do it. So I, that's an interesting thought. If you're working from home, you know, how do you, again, set those boundaries and set those ground rules. It's, it's very important um, to do. So at this point in time, 
We are going to take a short break again. We're on WGPA Sunny 1100 AM. This is Dr. Susan, and we're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back with Working From Home. Yeah, give you a chance. Yeah. Now I can check my phone. Yeah, exactly. Has the quarantine 15 turned into the quarantine 30? Do you have stubborn pockets of fat that no matter what... Do we have any other sponsors? No, I just have to talk about Earth Your Success, Small oh, Business Saturday. Okay. That's yeah. Next. I, have to, I do have a check. I yeah. should have it next week. Okay. Now I just... For you, you know, if there are any other sponsors I need to get in here, that's all. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I might just, like, I did, rec I recorded MS Taxi. I'll, I'll okay, whatever you feel like. We're going to do the weather, and then weather's another 30 seconds. Dr. Susan's pH, integrative health, where you can balance your body chemistry and balance your health. It's 9.36. This is the WGPA sunny 1100 AccuWeather forecast. Cloudy for today, high 53. Cloudy with periods of rain for tonight, low for the rest of your Wednesday, 45. Cloudy with some rain for Thanksgiving Day, high tomorrow, 58. Friday, sunshine and some clouds, high again, 58. And Saturday, clouds and some sun with a high 56. For WGPA sunny 1100, I'm AccuWeather Sandy right. Brown. It's 44 degrees. Hi, I'm Ken McCaleb, and you're listening to WG. And this is Dr. Susan, and we are back. And thank you so much, everybody. This is the live health and wellness call. Our call in number is 610-866-8074. We are talking today about working from home, the work at home dilemma, and how do you survive working from home during quarantine? And there's a lot. But before we get back to the show, I do have a couple of advertisements and shout outs to an events going on. The first thing I need to tell you is we know it's Thanksgiving this weekend. So as everybody is minimizing their Thanksgiving, there are other businesses out there who are working to do a lot of fun things and support our community. So on, let's start with Sunday. On Sunday, November 29th, Missing Peace in Nazareth, that's up on Bushville Center Road, they are having a holiday shopping for a cure event. That's right, from 3 to 7 p.m. at Missing Peace on Bushville Center Road in Nazareth, PA, from 3 to 7. You can go in and shop for your friends and family, shop for yourself, support local, shop local, and all of your purchases will be benefiting the Every Ribbon Counts Foundation. That's a local foundation that works to help all people going through the fight against cancer. We do direct support, we provide last wishes, but again, Missing Peace is helping provide a lot of funds for that. So again, if you need any holiday shopping ideas or need gifts, you can do the holiday shopping for a cure event Sunday, November 29th from 3 to 7. You can shop in person. If you do not want to shop in person, please search us out on Facebook at Missing Peace because we also do live shopping all the time and you can actually call in and anything that you see um, in, this, in our shopping videos, you can call and we will ship it out to you or you can do curbside pickup. And if you like to have fun, you need to go to social media right now and go to Facebook and look up Dr. Susan's PH Integrative Health on Facebook. That's Dr. Susan's PH Integrative Health page. And you can join in the fun on the 25 shopping days of Yoda. That's right. So every day from now until December 10th, we are on day nine today. Every day we post a picture. It is on the Dr. Susan's PH page. It's also on the Missing Peace page. It's also on Instagram at Dr. Susan's PH. And every day we post a picture. Today's picture has not yet been posted. It'll be posted after the show today for day nine. But every day we post a picture. And in the picture, it's either products from Missing Peace, products from Dr. Susan. There is a hidden Yoda. That's right, a hidden Yoda. And if you find Yoda and message us back, we are entering you to win lots of cool prizes. And I mean lots of cool prizes. The top grand prize is a $3,000 Cryo Cool Sculpting patch, Package for Body Contouring Pain Management. This is a phenomenal package we're offering at Dr. Susan. This is worth $3,000. That's our grand prize for all of the people who are searching and finding Baby Yoda and letting us know we're going to put you in a drawing. The live drawing is December 14th. So, hey, you still have time to enter. You still have time to get online on the Missing Peace Facebook page or the Dr. Susan's page, Integrative Health Book page, and search for Baby Yoda. It is a lot of fun. Um, some people are finding him. Some people are 
getting a little, uh, this is frustrating, but it's a lot of fun. It's just a fun way for you to see what both places have to offer and showcase. And it's also a great free way to have fun, but hey, it's a great way for you to win a lot of cool prizes uh, just by finding Yoda in a picture and sending it back to us. So again, two events coming up. We have the Shopping for a Cure November 29th. We have the 25 Shopping Days of Yoda. And remember that this Saturday is Small Business Saturday in the Lehigh Valley. That's right. If you are shopping, please shop local. Go visit all of your mom and pop stores. Please shop local. Go visit all the local gift shops. Buy gift cards at all of the restaurants that need your help and support during this time. Every dollar that you spend locally stays locally and recirculates over seven times. Help our local economy. Help all of our small businesses survive this. Let's uh, let's take some things away from the big box and give it back to the small guys because you know we're all working um, our hardest to survive. Speaking of Small Business Saturday, Herbs to Your Success on 64 South Main Street will also be doing some events on Saturday from 11 to 3. There will be a book signing there with a special guest author, so sneak peek on that. And Vanessa will be open 11 to 3 doing a lot of fun specials with essential oils. And that is Small Business Saturday. Herbs to Your Success on 64 South Main Street. If you haven't been in there, stop in. They have great great exercise machines, a salt booth. My favorite is the ozone. Uh, but again, lots of ways to keep healthy in the Lehigh Valley and also shop local. So Missing Peace on Sunday, uh, Herbs Your Success on Saturday, and hey, join in the 25 Shopping Days of Yoda online, which is a great way. I have three parents who beg me every day, my kid's waiting for the picture, my kid's waiting for the picture. So one of the fun things that you can do with your kids to have fun every day. Something fun to look forward to. But again, Dr. Susan, our call number 610-866-8074. I have about 13 text messages today. One day we're going to patch my cell phone in here because they're we just do doing the cell phone. We can do that. Um, but again, call in tips, strategies. What is driving you nuts about working from home? So that's kind of one of the things. But we're going back to strategies that can help. One of the uh, suggestions that um, we also got was schedule breaks during your work day. Do you schedule breaks? Do you take time off? Do you not? Um, but one of the um, uh, medical professionals I talked to who counsels people for things said, whatever you do, don't use social media as your break. Much of social media is toxic and create a diversion that is not productive. So if you're gonna take a break, use my friend Matthew's suggestion and get outside. Do something physical. I have one um, a movement specialist I worked, uh, she works up at, um, a place in Emmaus and she said every day roll your shoulders do 10 jumping back jumping jacks um, I have a physical trainer that I work with Amanda Grant and she says you know I use weights all the time she's taught me a lot of things to do with a five pound dumbbell even you know every 10 minutes just kind of do 10 reps with a five pound dumbbell and if you don't have dumbbells use a water bottle a 16 ounce water bottle works really well as a weight and sometimes just your body weight is is enough just to take a break and get your circulation moving. That's very important to do. But literally, um, the average for a child, if you've got a kid on uh, Zoom, which amazes me, we know all this research, but yet for some reason, you know, not to slam schools, but schools don't always take advantage of the research that's out there. The average attention span of a kid is anywhere from eight seconds to eight minutes. But some of the Zooms that I've had to listen through during, during while my kids were doing at home virtual school, like 42 minutes listening to a teacher read a PowerPoint? Like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I'm sorry, who does that? Who expects a 10 or 11 year old kid to sit and listen to a teacher reading a PowerPoint word for word? Like, nonstop. I'm like, it's just, it's just enough to like bang your head along the wall. But anyway, so again, take breaks, whatever you do, but don't use social don't media you as your break. You do not want to do that because it's some of it's toxic and we just don't want to. Create a diversion that's not productive. So, um, one of the other persons said, um, "Leave home, but don't run away from home. But leave home. Put fresh air and natural light will do you good. Make sure that there's a window that you can look out of. Make sure you get some type of fresh air as you are, you know, working from home. So take breaks. Make sure you, even if you just walk outside real quick and then walk back in. That's another tip on working from home. But." One of the other things, um, you know, I had another person just texted me, hey, he goes, I keep a dedicated office space. That's great. So it's the hardest thing to do if you are limited, limited to space uh, and if you can't turn that extra room into your new home office. 
Um, I have one mom who she was using her son's bedroom as her office, but then her son moved home. So she had to give up her office space and now it's the dining room table. But again, you know, think about the blue tape option. Get a get a throw rug and make that, you know, put your table and chair on that throw rug and like, okay, that's my workspace. When I step on the rug, you know, whether it's Aladdin's magic carpet or whatever, but you know, make sure that that's your new home office space so that you have that physical representation of your workspace. So, you know, think about, you know, you know, Kathy and my girlfriend, you know, Nancy from Disney, it's, you know, whether you hang shower curtains, putting blue painters tape on the floor, putting up room dividers, whatever you want to do, you know, your shower curtain dividers work really well. Um, but the most, the, the best one I have is I have a dad who submitted online. He messaged me on Facebook. So Charles um, submitted to me that what he does is he had two red signs made at a local printer. Now, um, he is actually from Florida. So, um, cause I do a radio show in Boca Raton too, by the way. But so, um, Charles submitted to me, he goes, this is what I do in my house. He goes, I went to my local printer and I got red paper and I have the words on duty on it and I had it laminated. And then I have green, a green sign that says off duty on it. And he has, a, so he has a red sign that says on duty and he has a green sign that says off duty. So what he does is he has this little stand and he puts up the sign. So the kids know that when that red on duty sign is hanging, they can't bother him. He's either on a call, in a Zoom, in a conference, replying to like 20 million things at once. They know that they can't bother him, whether the cat's thrown off or whether, you know, something's happened, they can't bother him or someone's at the door. When the green sign is up when he's working, that means that yes, he can be interrupted and it's okay for them to come into the workspace, ask a question. Yes, he can butter their bread or make them peanut butter and jelly for lunch, whatever. But he goes, it's the only thing that's worked. He's got three little kids. So he goes, it's the only thing that's worked for him. It's that visual representation for the kids. And then the two colors, you know, he's got two readers, one non-reader. He goes, look, it's the thing that we've done that's worked. He goes, one day when I can put in a, a room and put up a door, he goes, I'll put up a door. Um, but the red and green signs that he just puts up, the kids know that, you know, you know, because he talks to you, look, you can't interrupt me when I'm ready. He goes, you, you can't get me fired. That's kind of, you know, tough pressure to put on a kid. But it's one of the um, cool things that, you know, Charles has submitted that for him it's worked. And it's just a visual representation, again, not only for him, but for his kids that, you know, hey, I got to work. You know, before I used to go to an office and work and you didn't see me all day, but that's one of the things that they have to do. So the other thing that some people do that works is um, I have a friend who does this and what he does is it maintain a separate phone number. He has two phones. I have two phones too. I have my regular phone number that everybody in the universe has. And then I have a private cell phone that only a couple people have that number to. So, you know, it's maintain a separate phone number. So set up a phone number that you only use with colleagues and clients, the one that everybody else has. And then you have your personal one that your family and friends have so that you can kind of separate, make that separation. So it's not a 24 seven type of um, issue for you when you work from home. But the other cool thing too, is that one of the, um, I've read lots of books and about balancing and whether you're Zen and keeping things, um, uh, my friend Sophie is a specialist. I have two Reiki masters that um, submitted some information to me. And one of the things that they said that is really uh, contraindic contraindicating to the workplace is clutter. Clutter creates anxiety, which by the way is a topic of next Wednesday's top next Wednesday show is dealing with anxiety and depression during uh, quarantine. We have a lot of positive tips for that. I've talked to many people on that one already. But one of they said is that in your workspace is always work to declutter. Keep it organized and don't clutter. They said that having too much stuff around you can create diversion, can create anxiety, and actually can interrupt the workflow. So they're really trying to keep your workspace clean and decluttered as much um, as happy as you can. And the other thing that a lot of people um, also talk about is just as some people said, start your day with a routine. They say that because now you're working from home, you should end your work day with a routine so that you know that you're done and that you're now going to leave that mental framework of workspace and go home because it's, it's been a real tough 
thing for some people because, you know, for a lot of people, their home was their solace. Their, I'm going to go home and I'm going to relax. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to see my kids and my pets. And I'm going to go home and just do my thing. And now they can't, they don't, they don't have that escape anymore of leaving the workplace or that toxic work environment if they've had one. And when they go home, they don't, they don't have that transition anymore. Usually for some people, the drive home was their transition. That was the routine. Okay. I'm hanging my ID badge on my rearview mirror. Don't want to hear about it anymore until I put that ID badge on the next morning. Well, now you're there 24 seven. So they said that you should always end your day with a routine. Just like you start your day with you, do something, create something for you that indicates for you that your work day is done and that you're, got, you're leaving all that behind until the next work day. Whether it's taking your dog for a walk, doing a yoga class, doing something simple as just shutting off your computer or shutting off your work phone, shut it off, turn it off, you know, turning on a favorite podcast, whatever you choose, find something that's consistent for you to mark the end of that work environment, work day, mental piece, so that you can turn that mental piece off so that if you're, you need your home to be your solace, your relaxation point, you know, your, we, you know, we call it your nirvana, and you know, it's tough now because you've brought your work home into that environment, you need to find a way to have that breaking point or that you know, end all be all of like, look, no. I have one mom, who submitted, Jennifer submitted online, um, that what she does is, even though she's done with her work day, um, she literally walks outside, gets in her car, turns her car on, drives around the block, and then comes back home. <laughs> because that's, she's like, now she knows she's home. And it's, you know, if that you can do that, that's great. But for her, that was her clue that, okay, I'm, I'm home now, now I'm done with work. I'm not gonna look at it until the next day. And then she's home. So you have to find a way to end your day with that routine uh, to make yourself a little bit more productive um, during the work day. So that's just some of the tips and that, you know, that we are working on for all of that. So I just checked my text message. I have one more um, came in. One person said that whatever you do, whatever you do when you're at home, whether it's working or not, she goes, whatever you do, make sure you have your meals prepared. How's that one for a tip? And that's funny because I remember in the beginning of quarantine, when we were first home, you know, usually your kids go to school. They leave, they eat breakfast, they go to school, they eat lunch at school, they come home, they have a snack and dinner, and then you're done. I found that the first couple of weeks of quarantine, and I had a lot of people on social media sharing this, that your kids were eating you out of house and home all day long, like they were eating nonstop, which is why most people have gained 15, 20, 30 pounds. That's why I have so many people wanting to come in for cryo and cool sculpting right now because they want to lose all the weight that they lost during quarantine. But the kids literally were eating them out of house and home because even the kids were out of a routine. I'm like, no, wait a second. You used to eat breakfast at six o'clock in the morning. You ate lunch in school. At we packed lunch every day. You had your little lunch box. You ate that. You were fine till you came home at three, four, three thirty, four 4 o'clock, whatever. So... Now all of a sudden you're eating me out of house and home 24 seven. I'm like, wow. no, this is not how, this is not how this is going to work. So one of the moms said, Hey, look, here's what we're going to do. They put crates on the kitchen counter. So whatever they were going to have for lunch went in the crate. That's it. That was, it was, so instead of, they were still basically packing their lunch, just putting it in a crate on the kitchen counter. Like, look, that's your lunch. So you can eat that between 11 and 12, but you're not eating between 630 and 12. You're not going to eat. 14 bags of gummies and snacks and cheese to cheese it whatever you're gonna eat cheese curls or whatever So she actually kind of separated but she said he said whatever you do plan your meals out in advance Because what happens is is the adults are doing the same thing now They eat breakfast well they snack at their computer all day long until lunch then they eat lunch or they're door dashing everything from nine ways to Sunday and then they're snacking their way through dinner and which is why they're less sedentary let's face it when you're working at home you are not moving it much I had one girlfriend um, um, she she's been texting me back and forth my girlfriend Paula um, has a step counter and she said when she was at work she used to average about 12,000 steps a day every day at work every day because she always used to take the steps. She always used to walk in. But she, I was averaging from parking her car, walking into the building, walking back to her car, 12,000 steps. Now working from home, she's averaging 2,000 steps a day. I'm like, well, no wonder you've gained 
25 pounds because you're not moving as much. So, you know, get that routine and move. But even with your kids, plan your meals. Whatever you do, plan your meals out in advance. Don't let your kids eat 24-7 all day long. You don't eat 24-7. And do the same thing because what's happening is we're, we're losing that movement. We're losing the steps. I mean, even Paula's, I mean, 10,000 steps, that's a lot to lose. I mean, some people don't even ever hit 10,000 a day. But she was averaging 12,000 a day at her job. And now you are down to 2,000. So she's trying to find ways to move and walk. And anytime she takes a break, if it's nice out, she walks around the block trying to get those steps back in working from home. But again, plan your meals was the point from Jennifer online. Making sure that you, you know, whether it's crates on the kitchen counter or, you know, labeling things. Again, go back to Brittany's to-do list of getting your to-do list. Plan your meals out in advance for the week so that you know what you're doing and that you're not caught up by surprise. And then you don't have that six o'clock, oh my gosh, I'm hungry, I don't have anything. So we're going to, you know, eat all the unhealthy things, you know, so that you can kind of be as healthy and happy as possible. So... I hope some of the suggestions that people have sent in today help. Thank you for everybody who has been texting me all of your ideas. Again, if you ever want to be on the air and share your ideas or ask questions, you can do that. You can message me. You can email me. I have The topic of radio shows is on my website, www.drsusansph.com. D-R-S-U-S-A-N-S-P-H.com is in Potential Hydrogen. The list of shows are there. You can submit your ideas there. I have people who are messaging me on Dr. Susan's Page Integrative Health Facebook page, which is fine. Um, but we're also talking about working from home today. Next Wednesday, we're going to talk about the anxiety, depression, dilemma that everybody is suffering from. We're going to be talking about how social isolation affects the brain and what you can do to change that. There's a lot of research on that. The UK has just put out a ton of research on how they're trying to uh, work to avoid the social isolation uh, effects on the brain and anxiety and depression. So we'll have a lot of that research to share. Thor Laser has also provided a ton of research on how low level light therapy works to reverse anxiety and depression. I use that in my practice. Laser pain relief and healing with zero side effects. So if you don't know about Thor Laser, please look them up at thorlaser.com. I now own three Thor Laser units in my practice, and we can work. But we will be talking a lot about that um, next Wednesday. But again, thank you for everybody who have submitted ideas, ideas, and strategies for today. Thank you to Dr. Karen Day about the back injuries and why the forward slump you need to work to prevent. But again, this is Dr. Susan from Dr. Susan's PH. This is live health and wellness. And again. I'm about ready to end this show. So thank you so much for all of your support today. We hope to see you Sunday at Missing Peace at our Shop for a Cure event for the Every Ribbon Counts Foundation. And wherever you are, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be kind out there, people, because we are the ones that make the world go around. Have a great day. Well, at least I have like 18 texts I did not return. Oh, well, too bad, so sad. That was nice. Yeah, there's, I literally, I... You had so much information. Well, I, I wanted to get everything in that I could that everybody submitted, so I put right. this, do this whole outline.